Hello, my name is Shalala Wen, and I felt inspired today to talk about and also offer a meditation for activation of your light body. And I say activation as if it's kind of a one-time thing, but it's really more of an ongoing process. So an ongoing process of bringing in more light into every cell in the body and also into the chakras, the energy centers of the body, so that they continue to move out of 3D density and into a more porous 5D light expression. This has also been called um, a crystal body or turning crystalline, so crystal light as well. And this really is an ongoing process, just like the healing of our emotional bodies and the healing of our souls. It has many layers to it. And what I really feel is that our body is the densest aspect of our being. It's needed to be. It's, it's literally been the vessel. It's been the car, if you will, that has powered us through this highway this 3D highway. And so it's had to be dense. It's had to be polarized. It's had to be carbon in order to do that. And our experience of a lighter body usually comes when we leave the body. So during astral projection or um, out of body experiences or near death experiences, more and more of us, though, as we move into ascension, are bringing that light, bringing that leaving the body feeling into the body. So experiencing that heaven inside of our body. As we go through that process of bringing more heaven into our body, becoming more of that, then the density that we've experienced on a body level, on a cellular level, is wanting to come up and out and release. And basically, it's a big detoxification process. I think that's probably the biggest aspect of it for a long phase for many people, is this detoxification, the toxicity that we took in and are continuing to take in, being part of 3D reality. So we have this toxicity on the emotional body level that shows up in all kinds of ways, um, you know, intense emotional states and difficulty in relationships and what people call mental illness. But of course, on the physical body, we're even more familiar with how that toxicity shows up in terms of disease and chronic illness and being um, overweight, just not feeling vital in our body. So I really think there's kind of two phases to this process. There's the detoxification and there's the activation. And I believe it's more like detoxing and activating. And they kind of go like this. And as you get activated, you, be, you more detox happens. As you detox, more activation happens. So you will kind of feel, I believe, where you are in this process. You probably have a sense of that. You may be very conscious um, of detoxing right now. Uh, for a lot of people, that looks like moving into a um, not eating animals, moving into a vegan lifestyle, which is actually a huge detox. It's not just about what you're eating in terms, as I've written about it, the killing frequency of animals, but it's also a detox from the conditioning and the paradigm around that, uh, that makes that okay. So you're actually detoxing from that, plus a social conditioning. Whenever it comes to food, there's a social conditioning. There's birth family conditioning around that. That's, that's very strong. Our culture is based on the consumption of food. So the 3D culture is very much about eating and the importance of eating and three meals a day. And it's, it's very locked in. 
So as you begin to detox, and whatever way you're doing that, moving toward vegan, moving toward um, superfoods, moving toward fruits and vegetables and fasting, and wherever you're guided to go there, you're also detoxing from the conditioning of 3D and whatever it's told you about that. There's also another layer of deconditioning that I feel is about the soul and other timelines and what we could call the lower 4D matrix, which is also how you've related to food spiritually. So for example, you have, may have many timelines where you fasted a lot or um, medicinal aspects of you, what we call, that's what we call past lives in our soulful heart process. So you have aspects of you that have fasted probably and very often in order to achieve spiritual states, but how was that related to? Maybe it was actually a self-sacrificing of the body. It wasn't done in a, in a self-loving way. And I have many timelines and lifetimes uh, working with fasting. And in a lot of them, I sacrificed my body health in order to do that. I would, you know, I've met Metasoul sisters who would take herbs, for example, in order to channel the goddess or in order to basically activate light in the body. But it was bypassing a self-loving, vital, healthy relationship with my body in those timelines. So there's been healing around that. When I, when I go to fast, I can feel there's a push-pull about it because of that. It's like, well, are we going to do this in a self-loving way this time? Because I, I don't want to do it the way it was. Or timelines where you literally, aspects of you, soul aspects, starve to death. So there may be even a version to not eating because of that. Or when we talk about eating animals, there can be a very strong tribal pull toward that toward the consumption of animals. People talk about blessing them and ceremonies around them. Yet I really feel we're being offered to transcend beyond that layer as well, um, where we no longer even need to consume animals in any form. And eventually we no longer need to consume food, that we will live on light. And if we are eating anything, it's um, a really high potent, vital superfood. So, I mean, that's where I feel like this light body thing is headed. That's what I've been offered, especially by the Lemurians living in inner earth, is that we really, as we ascend in our consciousness and our bodies get lighter and lighter in that, then what we choose is fuel is different. So we might choose some dense food, but it would be very high frequency food. And what we really would choose is to live on prana or energy, life force. Um, prana is everywhere. It's in the oceans, it's in plants, it's um, all around us. So we can pull prana in to our body as food, actually. Um, and then the other thing is light. We can pull photonic light. There's so much light coming in, especially this last year. Um, I've really felt it amplify. There's so much photonic light coming in from the great cosmic sun, downloading to our sun, downloading to our personal sun, which is a chakra about two feet above our head. So I want the meditation today, I want to connect you to those upper chakras so that you can bring light in. We will also bring prana in. So you'll get a feeling of that. As we're doing that, maybe notice what feels dense still in your body. Um, maybe you'll get a feeling sense of, well, you know, I ate some, some gluten last night, some bread or pasta, and I feel the heaviness of it. Um, or I had some refined sugar and I feel, I feel when I do eat sugar, which is rare these days, it's very buzzy to me. I can feel it in my, my third eye. Um, I've also no longer eat gluten. I'm currently in a fasting period. 
um, also with um, superfood smoothies is really the only thing I'm eating right now. So that's that's after some periods of going into different kinds of things, different food eating. Now I'm now I'm really feeling another phase of going lighter, and and perhaps this continues on for me, where the denser foods are no longer what I'm needing or wanting. So feel that today. Just feel what's going on with your body, as connected to your capacity to bring in light, as connected to your capacity to bring in prana. So we will go into that and see what happens. All right, we'll go ahead and begin to bring in white light. However you visualize and feel that, White light is one of the purest forms for our our bodies. So it's the light I like to work with the most. If you see another kind of light, then that's the light for you. And I would trust that. Well, so maybe tune, tune in in this moment and feel which light is food for you. I'm going to continue to work with white light. So we're going to bring this white light starting about two feet above our head with that personal sun chakra. You can visualize it as a sun. It's also called the stellar gateway. Something about personal sun I like. So feel that white energy coming into that personal sun. See it swirl. As you're doing this, you may see some codes, which are light. So seeing them could be in sacred geometry. It could be images. Or just a feeling sense. Regularly connecting with this chakra seems to really allow the light codes that are coming in from cosmic sources, from the sun, from Gaia, from the various gateways. Swirl white energy there. through that personal sun. We'll move now to the soul star, which is below it, about a foot above the head. The soul star connects to your karmic timelines, lifetimes, Meta soul, which is your individuated soul source. Swirl the light through the soul star chakra. You may again. 
again receive images, feel emotions, and we'll move the white light to the back of the head, which is the causal. This is an important chakra that many people don't work with, and I find that it causes the most physical manifestation. As we're receiving so many galactic activations, our DNA is wanting to go galactic again. And the back of the head is also a place where the reptilian brainstem connects. So the causal is the um, is working with the unplugging and the dissolving of that and the bringing in of galactic codes. So as you connect to it, if you have a lot of head and neck pain and back pain, it could be connected to the causal. So just keep swirling white energy back there. bringing light into these three chakras activates another level of light body. Beyond, even if you've done a lot of work with the main seven, activating these three really seems to bring in that bigger, expansive light body Merkaba activation. So take a moment and just move white light or whichever light you've been guided to use through the personal sun, the soul star, and the causal. Even in doing this, you'll probably feel an expansion. I've been guided, this is sort of like the branches of your tree. So the main seven chakras are like the trunk. So a lot of people focus on that trunk and get it really activated and moving and cleared. And that's wonderful. And we also need the branches to be expanded in order to fully move into our sacred human print. So expand those branches. That's wonderful visualization too, is to feel yourself as a tree and you're expanding up and your branches are expanding out and they're collecting light, just like trees do with their leaves. You're soaking in light. And that's how expansive the light body is, right? It's not confined to the physical body. So this shifts our thinking too about what our bodies need. Now we'll bring white light through our trunk. So the crown, top of the head, the third eye, forehead, our throat chakras. Let's spend a moment in our higher heart. You can also move your hand counterclockwise, which is what I'm doing. That also, as you visualize the white energy, you move the energy And as I work with people's energy, it actually moves far beyond their bodies, their physical bodies, and and can go even 30 feet out. (laughs) So you can feel that too for yourself, how far out your chakras actually go. Lots of 
lots of activation of the higher heart recently, so really bring that white energy in. And then down to the lower three. Solar plexus, sacral, and the root, which so many people have done great work with. Bringing white light in there to those bottom lower chakras that root us. They heal our personal will and our sexuality and our desire and our feeling of abundance in the world. And then we'll bring white energy all the way through the root system. I like to literally visualize a root system coming out of the base of the spine, connecting down to Gaia and then connecting to a network of all the other root chakras. It's a oneness feeling. So now we're gonna activate some light and some prana, bringing that white energy again, starting at the top, at the personal sun, and we're gonna move it through like a flow, like standing under a waterfall. Whoosh it through, starting at the top, down through the crown, and down the trunk, and out. Whoosh. Orgasms do this. They whoosh energy out of us. Very good light body activators. <laughs> so whether that's with a partner or by yourself, that's a good activation. But you can also do this whoosh. Like um, you can also do this under a shower and feel the water as light that's coming in. It should feel good. Exhale if you need to. There should be a life force energy to it and maybe even a shaking. It's like when you, when you do yoga and you're shaking in a certain pose. That's the prana. So keep doing that as many times as you feel guided to. And swirling the light through your chakras. We'll open our eyes. <laughs> and it's really, that was about 12 minutes, so it's that simple. If that's all you did in one day, um, that would do a lot. And you can, of course, expand that out as much as you feel guided to. And thank you for joining me.